The FBI raids Mar-a-Lago and Republicans respond by saying that Trump might have been set up or that the FBI might have planted some information to get Donald Trump. What does this mean? Let's talk about it, y'all. Middle America. And you ain't black. The first time ever any... You people. You're Americans. We are Americans indeed. Uh, my name is Vincent. This is Middle America. Vin and Sorry, we're not left wing. We're not right wing. We're just right. Shout out to Jay Rillo. Shout out to Society Lost. Shout out to Tony. Shout out to Merck. Shout out to Drewby Ranch. Shout out to my big brother, Art Pejrez. Shout out to all you beautiful people. We are Middle America. We're not left wing. We're not right wing. We're just right. Uh, two minutes ago, I, uh, I got all my Republican friends angry and upset with me. And uh, now I'm about to get all my left-wing friends angry and upset with me. Here we go. Uh, here is the following tweet that uh, uh, Miss, uh, what's her name? I, I, I hate to say it that way. I hate to say it that way. Um, Marjorie Taylor Green, Margie Taylor, Marjorie Taylor Green uh, posted the following. Now look, look at this, look at this thread. Uh, look, look, look at this thread here from uh, on, uh, from Twitter. Now, this is Trump's true social, true social pro uh, thingamajiggy. Here we go. Here's Marjorie Taylor Greene. I think there is an extremely high probability that the FBI planted evidence against President Trump. Otherwise, why would they not allow his attorneys or anyone else to watch him while they conducted their unprecedented raid? They know the consequences of an empty-handed power move. Now, where is she getting this from? Here's Donald Trump. The FBI and others from the federal government would not let anyone, including my lawyers, be anywhere near the areas that were rummaged and otherwise looked at during the raid at Mar-a-Lago. Everyone was asked to leave the premises. They wanted to be left alone without any witnesses to see what they were doing, t t taking, or hopefully not planting... Why did they strongly, all caps, insist on having nobody watching them, everybody out? Obama and Clinton were never raided despite, bi despite big disputes. Okay. Okay. Here we go. The FBI and the federal government told everybody to clear out. They didn't want his lawyers there so that they might have planted something. Now, what does this tell me? This tells me that uh, the veneer of Teflon Don is starting to crack. Why would you say that people are planting things when in reality you're completely innocent? A cursory reading of this situation looks to me like Trump is already stacking the deck to deal with the revelations that may come from this FBI raid. Mr. Trump is acting like um, this is some unique thing when the FBI gets a search warrant and raids your house or raids your dwelling place that they allow you or your your friends or people that are close to you that would have a vested interest in manipulating evidence that they would send these people out. He's act, he's he's banking on the idea that the people that read this stuff won't know that this is standard, especially if it's somebody who has a proven record of uh, gangsters around him who are willing to lie and do all types of other things who are willing to do time for him. This happens a lot in Rico cases, by the way, because you got one guy that's at the tip of the spear, you know, like the mafia guy, the John Gotti type character, but then you got all these people around him who are willing to lie, cheat, steal, kill, go to jail for decades for this guy. So why would I want you around? when I'm doing those kinds of uh, uh, investigations. Ridiculous. However, 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 we cannot, just like I said in the previous episode where I specifically stated that I have a good memory. I remember things. Okay? I remember things. Dear listener, the fact of the matter is, I saw a shirt one time with Kurt Cobain's face on it, and the shirt said, 
Just because you're paranoid does not mean they're not after you. Hmm. What does that mean? Here we go, dear listener. Um, we got to do it because we've got to be fair. We've got to be balanced. We've got to be rational. You guys remember the Mueller report. You guys remember that? Remember the Mueller report? And you guys remember the big, big uh, hearing with Mr. Mueller? And how that went? Maybe you guys forgot. Who knows? Okay. Here is, we did a two-hour Mueller report uh, report. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play specific clips relative to the Mueller report that have got to be contended with and answered for. The What I'm about to post you has got to be explained and it's got to be answered. And when I show you what I'm about to show you, we cannot pretend that Mr. Trump does not have a case or somewhat of a valid complaint or concern when he makes the case that this is uh, political posturing from the uh, the Democratic side. First and foremost, first, <laughs> that's outside of my purview. Very good, very good. First and foremost, he said, Obama and Clinton had issues. What's going on with them? Okay, that's a very interesting question. Remember, remember, guys, people saying, look, we got to follow the law. There is that Presidential Records Act. He took all these things from his house. He took 15,000 files or uh, boxes of 15,000 whatever from from the White House to Mar-a-Lago. That's illegal. That's the law. We got to live by the law, et cetera, et cetera. OK, all right. You're right. Here's the New York Post, the same New York Post, by the way, which broke the Hunter Biden laptop story, which was the same New York Post that got uh, banned from Twitter because they had uh, information that could have hurt Joe Biden. And obviously, Twitter view themselves as Democratic National Committee operatives. They obviously have a bias. And so they they uh, they they suspended the New York Post for the Hunter Biden laptop scenario. OK. And by the way, by the way, there were 50 former intelligence officers who signed off on a letter that said that the Hunter Biden laptop story was Russian mis or disinformation. You guys remember that? Remember PolitiFact and uh, uh, Snopes and all these people were saying, Hunter Biden laptop, no, 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 that's all fake. So New York Post reported on it, and Twitter said, we are suspending you because that's fake. That's not true. Well, it turns out, long after the election, that it was true. That Hunter Biden did have all that junk on his laptop, and he absolutely did have ties with Ukraine, Russia, China, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those were facts. 15% of people said that if... They would have known that information. They would have voted differently, which would have secured a Trump re-election. So here's plank number one. Plank number one is that even during the election season, the intelligence apparatus in America specifically worked to lie to get a story uh, invalidated so as to make sure that Trump would lose. That's a fact that happened. Now, were those 50 intelligence agents, uh, officers, whatever, former and current, were were they held accountable? No. You remember Brian Steltzer and all those people when they were talking about it, they said, ah, it's not really that big of a deal. That was the intelligence community that did that. That was the intelligence community that did that. Here's the other thing. We talked about this yesterday, but I will refresh I will refresh your guys' memory because this is very, very important. We talked about this yesterday um, in, in, in the previous video. You guys remember Chuck Schumer came on to MSNBC right at the beginning of the Trump administration. Here we go. Here's Chuck Schumer. At the beginning, join us again as the brand new Democratic leader. The beginning of the Trump administration. This is five years old, and he said this on the at the time most popular late night news talk show in the literal country. Here we go. 
Let me ask you, I don't know if you have seen this. I don't want to blindside you with this. This is, a, this is um, the latest statement, latest tweet, as you were just saying. The president-elect's latest, latest yeah. unsolicited pronouncement on the intelligence community. This was his tweet just a little while ago tonight. You see the scare quotes there. The yeah. intelligence briefing yeah. on so-called Russian hacking was delayed until Friday. Perhaps more time needed to build a case. Very strange. We're actually told, intelligence sources tell NBC News since this tweet has been posted, that actually this intelligence briefing for the president-elect was always planned for Friday. It hasn't been delayed. Look. But he's, he's taking these... Shots, this antagonism, yep. this taunting to the intelligence tell community. You. Watch what Chuck Schumer said. This was five years ago at the beginning of Donald Trump's regime, reign, time of service, however you want to characterize it. Watch what he says. You take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. So even for a practical, supposedly hard-nosed businessman, he's being really dumb to do this. What do you think the intelligence community would do if they were motivated I don't know, to? but I, from what I am told, they are very upset with how he has treated them and talked about them. And we need the intelligence. They're very upset about how he's treated them. What do you mean? Donald Trump's not obligated to be nice to you or anybody. What do you mean, Mr. Schumer, that these people have six ways from Sunday to get back at you? For what? For what? Listen, I don't like Donald Trump. I definitely don't like him as president. I blame him for a lot of the shit that happened over the last five years. But you don't get to use your power. I didn't elect you. Did you elect the CIA chief? Did you elect the chief of the, the the head of the FBI? Did you elect the head of the NSA? Did you did we elect any of these people? Nope. You guys got lifelong appointments. Most of us don't even know who you are. And here you are uh, using Chuck Schumer as a mouthpiece to say, "Don't fuck with us." So we got six ways from Sunday to fuck you up. Nah, bro, unacceptable. That is unacceptable in the United States of America. And I don't care how horrible Trump is. He's still a U.S. citizen and he still has rights. What do you mean? We got six ways from Sunday to fuck you up. He came out and said that on the biggest show on the planet. And he's never repudiated it. Let me say this again. Let me play this again. Because again, just like... If the January 6th is a litmus test for a person's patriotism, whether their personality is more important than the country. And here's another one. If you are cool with that, that's because you don't love this country and you're obsessed with a person just like the Trump folks are. You're just a different side of the same coin. This is complete and total fascist security state Stasi bullshit. You say something against us, we're going to come for you. We don't give a fuck if you're the president. What? Let me play this again for you, dear listener. This man sent out a tweet. This man sent out a tweet. And this is a response to a tweet. Look at his face right now. This is head nodding. Look at his head nodding. Watch. Watch, 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 watch. Shots, this antagonism, yep. this taunting to the intelligence tell community. You, you take on the intelligence community. They have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. So... Even for a practical, supposedly hard-nosed businessman, he's being really dumb to do this. What do you think the intelligence community would do if they were motivated I don't know, to? but I, from what I am what told... What do you think they would do? They are very... What do you think they would do? If the, if the intelligence community didn't like Donald Trump, what do you think they would do? Like, how do you think they would retaliate? I mean, that was at the beginning of uh, Trump's presidency, right? That was the beginning of Trump's presidency. This guy came out and said that if you mess with us, we're going to fuck you up. Okay, now watch. Here we go. I've got some clips there, listener. I've got some clips from the Mueller, the Mueller report uh, or the Mueller testimony. I'm sorry. The Mueller testimony. I've got some clips from the Mueller testimony. And I think, I think, uh, I think, you, might, I think you might be interested in looking at it. Shall we? Shall we look at it? What do you think, uh, uh, JF? JF, do you think we should we should rehash some of the some of the highlights of their Mueller report again? We probably should. JA says we should, so I have I have to I have to do it. I have to do it because JA said we should. So we gotta be fair and balanced here. Here we go. How'd he find out? 
Here, here's some selections from the Mueller report, okay? Uh, wh where he testified uh, in Congress, okay? Here we go. Just remember this. In 2016, the FBI did something they probably haven't done before. They spied on two American citizens associated with a presidential campaign, George Papadopoulos and Carter Page. With Carter Page, they went to the FISA court. They used the now famous dossier as part of the reason they were able to get the warrant and spy on Carter Page for a better part of a year. With Mr. Papadopoulos, they didn't go to the court. They used human sources. All kinds of, from about the moment Papadopoulos joins the Trump campaign, you got all these people all around the world starting to swirl around him. Names like Halper, Downer, Mifsud, Thompson, Meeting in Rome, London, all kinds of places. The FBI even sent even sent a lady posing as somebody else when by the name Azra Turk even dispatched her to London okay uh, thank you G Johnson hopefully I uh, increase the volume for these for these guys what uh, this guy's talking about is uh, the FBI during the campaign were sending operatives to intercept the folks that were working on Trump's team. They even sent a uh, a clan a woman in a clandestine form to, to go get these guys. Let's let's hear it again. Somebody else went by the name Azra Turk, even dispatched her to London to spy on Mr. Papadopoulos. In one of these meetings, Mr. Papadopoulos is talking to a foreign diplomat, and he tells the diplomat, Russians have dirt on Clinton. That diplomat then contacts the FBI. And the FBI opens an investigation based on that fact. You point this out on page one of the report. July 31st, 2016, they open the investigation based on that piece of information. Diplomat tells Papadopoulos, Russians have dirt, excuse me, Papadopoulos tells a diplomat, Russians have dirt on Clinton. Diplomat tells the FBI, what I'm wondering is, who told Papadopoulos? How'd he find out? I can't get into mm. the evidentiary file. Yes, you can because you wrote file. about it. You can't just the answer. Oh, God. So, so they're saying, who? How did he know about this? He says, I can't get into that, man. I don't know. I don't know. This is George. I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and then Jim Jordan says, "What the hell are you talking about? You were the one that put in the page. It's the page one." What the fuck is wrong with you? He didn't say that. That's my translation. Well, we continue. Isn't my wife beautiful? Holy shit. No makeup, no nothing. She's a supermodel. We'll lie. We keep going. Ah! 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 You know what this is like? What? This is like, you know in the Bible where Paul he was on page 74? You know, like I said, when I was doing... Um, and you're disaster look at this guy right here he's not happy he's unhappy Trump tell us who told him Joseph Mifsud Joseph Mifsud's a guy who told Papadopoulos did you see how he said eh, you got me did so George Mueller was just caught in a lie he was literally just caught in a lie he said who's the one that told him I don't know man I don't know I have no idea I have no idea it was in the report you put in there he didn't say I forgot. He said I can't get into that. You put it in page one, Mr. Mueller. Did you notice something? Why? He didn't turn any pages. Now, oh. if you guys notice through the whole report, he usually will say, what page is that? And then he'll turn to it. This guy said it's in page 91. Yeah. And all he did was look down because he was on the freaking page already. He was on the page and he didn't want to give it up that he absolutely knew. Who was who was the one that gave who was the agent that gave Papadopoulos the information? Or he wasn't even there and he just knew it. So he, he knew, knew it. To go well, well, no, he's looking and then he kind of nods like, yeah. Rewind it and watch it again. He was on the page already. Unbelievable. And then when and then when the guy's laughing at him, he basically like nodded and says, "Yeah, you got me." Wow. Unbelievable. This is this is the guy. This is the guy that was supposed to take down Trump for us. Okay. All right. The mysterious professor who lives in Rome and London, works at teach in two different universities. This is the guy who told Papadopoulos. He's the guy who starts it all. And when the FBI interviews him, he lies three times. And yet you don't charge him with a crime. 
You charge Rick Gates for false statements. You charge Paul Manafort for false statements. You charge Michael Cohen with false statements. You charge Michael Flynn, a three-star general, with false statements. But the guy who puts the country through this whole saga starts it all for three years we've lived this now. He lies, and you guys don't charge him. And I'm curious as to why. Well, I can't get into it, and, uh, and it's obvious, I think, that we can't get into charging decisions. When the we can't get into it! Well, you charged all these Trump people. You charged all these Trump people for this. This guy, this guy, this guy, freaking three-star general. This guy, this guy, this guy. But then this guy who started the lie created the entire yarn and the steel dossier. You didn't touch him. Why? I can't tell you that. Can't tell you that. Huh. That's justice? That's equal weights and measures. That's the 14th Amendment. I'm sorry. Donald Trump and the people that worked on his team is still a U.S. citizen. You don't get to do that shit to a U.S. citizen. They obviously were targeting him. And they obviously protected the operatives who were going against him. Obviously. This man, Trump, went against the entire United States government established. Please remember that Mr. Trump, they had a Never Trump campaign late into the Republican primaries to get rid of this guy. So now we've got the federal government pulling the levers of the intelligence apparatus, both domestically and foreign. They, they followed Trump's guys all over the literal world. And then when they got caught in their lies, none of them got prosecuted. There was no accountability, dear listener. And then when Jim Jordan says, why didn't you guys go after the, since you've been consistently going after Trump's folks for lying, why didn't you go after, oh, uh, yeah. and I'm sorry, a lot of you guys on the left, man, you guys look the other way on that bullshit. That's because. You're more concerned about the personality. You, your hate for Trump outweighs your love for your country. You look the other way. You get, Listen, you got to dig deep here if you're on the left. I'm sorry. But you, per, Jimmy Dore is the only one that was straight on this topic in left-wing uh, uh, virtual media. Literally everybody else, you guys, look the other way. That was a mistake. That was wrong. And you can call uh, Trump supporters, you can call them crazy, you can say that they're conspiracy theorists, blah, 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 blah. But when you have an interaction like that, I'm sorry, but it tends people toward a distrust. And it tends people to think, maybe there's an agenda here. You know, like when those folks said, uh, viva la resistance. Because uh, they were part of the resistance and how they were not going to allow Trump to be uh, president. One of the FBI agents that was working on this Miller investigation after she got released from the FBI secured a job with who? MSNBC. That investigation was riddled with operatives who explicitly stated that their goal was to get Trump out of office. They said that it's on the record. FBI interviewed him in February. FBI interviews him in February. When the special counsel's office interviewed Mifsud, did he lie to you guys too? Can't get into that. Did you interview Mifsud? Can't get into that. Is Mifsud Western intelligence Can't or Russian intelligence? That. Can't get into that. A lot of things you can't get into. What's interesting, you can charge 13 Russians, no one's ever heard of, no one's ever seen, no one's ever gonna hear of them, no one's ever gonna see them. You can charge them, you can charge all kinds of people who are around the president with false statements, but the guy who launches every, the guy who puts this whole story in motion, you can't charge him. I think I'm that's not, amazing. I'm not certain, I, I, I'm not certain I uh, agree with your characterizations. Well, I'm reading from your report. Gibson <laughs> told Papadopoulos. Papadopoulos tells the diplomat. I'm not sure that I agree with your assessment. Well, the, he asked you initially. You said you couldn't get into it. 
because you forgot that it was on the page that you were looking at, but then you were looking at the page, and as soon as he called bullshit, you just nodded your head and said, yeah, yeah. And as somebody pointed out, not once did Mueller get jammed up for lying. I've been in a deposition before. You know what they tell you in depositions? If you don't want to answer a question, they'll tell you to say you don't remember. I can't recall. So I was in that four-hour deposition, and... Uh, I only answer two questions that way, but that's just generally because I truly didn't remember. But there's ways to not answer a question when you're in a deposition. Yeah, it was your boy. I was by myself. Just just me, my uh, counsel, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was sitting next to me, and I was in a board full of these very angry white state operatives. <laughs> okay? I, 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 we understand how depositions go. This is... Is bullshit. If I would have done what Mueller did, if I would have done in my deposition what Mueller did, you wouldn't see your brother. I'm sorry, but you, you know, it's like the brother said. He said the conspiracy theory is uh, looking less and less conspiracy ish. You trying to tell me that these Trump supporters have zero reason, zero reason to believe that their guy is being targeted? Zero reason. They've got no rational reason uh, uh, to believe that this is a setup or that the FBI could be planting evidence. None at all. Okay. The diplomat tells the FBI, the FBI opens the investigation July 31st, 2016. And here we are three years later, July of 2019. The country's been put through this. And the central figure who launches it all lies to us. And you guys don't hunt him down and interview him again. And you don't charge him with a crime. Now, here's the good news. Here's the good news. The president was falsely accused of conspiracy. The FBI does a 10-month investigation. And James Comey, when we deposed him a year ago, told us at that point they had nothing. You do a 22-month investigation. At the end of that 22 months, you find no conspiracy. And what's the Democrats want to do? They want to keep investigating. They want to keep going. Maybe a better course of action, maybe a better course of action is to figure out how the false accusation started. Maybe it's to go back and actually figure out why Joseph Nipson was lying to the FBI. And here's the good news. Okay, um, you you guys you guys can watch the full thing, but it was an it was a it was a it was a five hour it was a three four hour shit show that that Mueller thing. The you had operatives from the FBI that were saying we're not going to let him be president. We had we had uh, folks in the FBI saying "Viva la Resistance," that they were part of the resistance. So when these Trump people talk about the deep state, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You can you can dismiss these Trump people all you want. They have definitive proof and very good reason to believe. That the uh, the intelligence apparatus in this country have a vendetta against this man, and they're not the ones that went on Rachel Maddow's show and said that bullshit. It was Chuck Schumer who, aside from Nancy Pelosi and Barack Hussein Obama, is the most powerful Democrat in America. <laughs> so, so, so we wanna we wanna we wanna say that all these Trump supporters are crazy. For saying that they could plant this stuff. Now look, do I believe the FBI planted info? I don't know. I don't even know what the documents contain. I don't know. But am I going to dismiss that? Am I going to say, ah, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I can't. These people explicitly said that they were going after him. They said it on TV. They have it in official reports. They said it on the floor of the United States Senate. I'm sorry, you're telling me not to look at that? Nah, bro, I can't go there with you, bro. No way. Now look, it's not over. Watch this. Watch this, dear listener. You, you this, this shit is unbelievable to me. So Trump said, hey, Obama had problems. How come he's not going after me? Watch. This is the New York Post again. Obama White House lawyers repeatedly invoked the Presidential Records Act. This is what they got, they're jamming up uh, Trump on right now to delay the release of thousands of pages of records from President Bill Clinton's White House Politico reported. This is Obama delaying the release of Clinton documents because all these people protect each other, which is why we don't have the list, the Epstein list. Where is the Epstein list? They found Ghislaine Maxwell guilty. Where is the list? These people protect one another. We continue. At the end of his presidency, Barack Obama trucked 30 
million pages of his administration's records to Chicago, promising to digitize them and eventually put them online, a move that outraged historians. So the 15 whatever boxes that Mr. Trump has, Mr. Obama had 30 million pages that he said, don't worry about it, I understand. I'll put it up online for you guys. More than five years after Obama's presidency ended, the National Archives webpage reveals that zero pages have been digitized and disclosed. People can file requests via the FOIA, Freedom of Information Act, a law Obama helped to wreck, to access Obama records, but responses from presidential libraries can be delayed for years, even more than a decade if the information is classified. Dear listener, Mr. Obama spent about $36.4 million fighting FOIA requests from U.S. citizens. $36 million. And by the way, he didn't spend $36 million, dear listener. You and I did. How come? What was he not, what, what was he trying to hide? But please understand, Mr. Obama has 30 million pages that he's got that he promised five years ago to digitize. Well, I've got, luckily for me, I have the actual um, uh, screenshot of the Obama library's percentage of how much they have uploaded from that 30 million. Okay, I've actually got the screenshot. So here's an update for you guys as recently as two hours ago. Here's the Barack Obama uh, uh, presidential library. You'll see right there, there's 39,713,750 textual uh, pages in the presidential library holdings. Here you go. Here are the online, uh, uh, online scans that he promised to give to us, which justified why he took them from the White House to Chicago. Zero percent. Zero. Mr. Obama, five years ago, took 30 million pages, spent $36 million to reject FOIA requests, and then left office with 30 million pages, promised to digitize them five years ago, And to this moment, as of two hours ago, there are zero, zero pages uploaded. Where is the FBI? Now, see, look, I don't know what the truth is, but I'm sorry. You people, I'm specifically talking about the FBI and anybody else that wants to just disregard these Trump people. I'm sorry, but that's fucking weird. You sent the FBI... You sent the FBI into Mar-a-Lago because everybody, it's law and order. I told you guys yesterday, I don't care that he was a former president. That doesn't mean anything to me relative to Trump. Oh, my God. Who's ever done this to a president? I don't care about that. That's the law, bro. But here's my problem. Here's my problem. How is it possible that Mr. Obama gets off scot-free? It's been five years. Mr. Trump could possibly be the president again in another two years, in which case he could determine the classification status of those things. Mr. Obama can never again be president. You got eight years of accumulated documents. You got 30 million documents, bro. Not a single one of them is released. Where's the fucking FBI raid? Where's the raid? If you can't answer that question, when you when you look at that in concert with the Mueller report and what we just saw, I'm sorry, but you cannot tell me that these Trump people are crazy. I'm sorry. You can't tell me that they're crazy if they say the evidence was planted. I'm sorry. You guys have completely shot all of your fucking credibility. You have. You have. And the worst part about this is, what is my disposition? I think probably they have something genuine on him. But because of the previous actions of the security state and the fact and the compliance in this situation, I do believe that silence is consent. The compliance with, quote, left wing or uh, neoliberal media in looking the other way at all of these violations of of uh, equality and the application of the 14th Amendment now is going to come back and bite you in the ass because now this man has very plausible deniability. I'm sorry. He does. He does. He does. 
And that's what happens. That's what happens when you do, you know, the scripture says you must have a just hin and an honest ephah, meaning what you do for one, you got to do for the other. And the FBI and everything else has been completely one-sided relative to this man and his opponents. Completely one-sided. Joe Biden... Joe Biden's son. Now listen, the drug stuff, the stuff with the with the with the girls and all that, and his naked pictures, I think is ridiculous. And if you enjoy that shit and you posted that shit online and all the rest of it, something's wrong with you. Get help. That's none of our business. But this stuff with Ukraine, this stuff where Biden is involved, uh, Biden's kid is involved with chemical weapons, possibly in Ukraine, the slush fund from China. Where's the FBI raid there? I don't know. Do you guys think, do you guys think that maybe, just maybe, the information on Mr. Uh, Biden's laptop relative to Ukraine, Russia, and China, the three uh, most important uh, adversarial states or, or war-torn states that we're dealing with right now, do you think that maybe uh, there, there might be some useful information there, considering... Mr. Biden's relationship with Burisma, Russia, and China, and all the rest of it. Don't you think that they're, they're, they they could find something if they wanted to find something Well, Mr. Biden? How come they've avoided it? As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, when it was legitimate and real, the intelligence apparatus, including members of the FBI, went and told all of us in America that that wasn't real, that it was Russian mis and disinformation. So not only did they not investigate it, they went the other way and made sure that you couldn't even publish, talk about it online in any way that would reach people. You remember what happened to the New York Post? They got suspended by Twitter for telling the truth relative to Hunter Biden. So you're not going to look at Hunter Biden's laptop. You're not going to do a raid on Mr. Barack Obama's estates in Chicago. But you're going to go after Donald J. Trump. You, you, you jammed up all the folks in his uh, in his cabinet that supposedly lied for him during the entire Russia investigation. And then the guy that told the ultimate lie that made us waste four years of our precious lives and millions of our precious dollars, that guy got off. And you wouldn't even explain to us why he was in charge. So now we have to fill in the blank. And the blank is he was working for you because all you guys were working together to get rid of Trump because you underestimated him. And you didn't think there was any chance he was going to win. And you applied all of the resources in your power to get this man deposed. And now, because the economy is so horrible and our president, our current president is, is, is uh, performing miserably, it's very possible and very likely that this man will be the president again. And you can't have that. So now we have this raid and you're praying and hoping that you find something to go after him. That's what I think is happening. But if these people take it a step further and say that you planted evidence, I'm sorry. I, I, I'd be more inclined to believe them than you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't. I, you, I'm not going to ignore what these people have done and said with this man and his supporters for the last four or five years. I'm not doing that. This is why we have laws. This is why the framers of our Constitution gave us all these amendments and things of that nature. It's to protect us against uprisings. As I said, Mr. Trump is an icon. He represents something. He represents something. And it would be hell on earth if you had actual legitimate charges to lock this man up and do whatever. But considering all the bad blood and all the blatant lies and the breaking of the law and the violation of our Constitution against this man and his circle, you have now made the idea that evidence could be planted into something believable. And this is a logical consequence. And I hope because a lot of us are young, a lot of us on the, are on the scale of millennials and zillennials. Let this be a lesson to you. 
You have got to shoot straight. If the FBI would have shot straight during the Mueller investigation and closed in two days and says, we have no evidence. As a matter of fact, this person lied, this person lied. Whether you're a Democrat or Republican, whether you're a Hillary operative or a, or a, or a Trump operative, if you lie to me, I'm going to fucking put you away. If you did that five years ago, then today when these Republicans say, oh, they're planting evidence, it would be completely unbelievable. But you didn't do that. And if the left-wing media would have would have joined the voices of people like Fox News and Tux, Tucker Carlson, I'm sorry, but he was right on this. He was right on the, the intelligence community's relationship to, to Mr. Trump. If our media, TYT, Rising, if you guys would have held these people accountable, then Trump would not have an escape clause with conspiracy theories, but now he does. And I hope you now understand why we have got to be consistent. There's a lot on the line, but the problem with millennials and the Democratic Party is that we're only looking at what's in front of us. We're not looking at a couple steps ahead. I, as a black American, know when I see that a government institution has an issue with a certain group of people. The unfair treatment and all the rest of it, I'm sorry. Now, if you hate Trump, that's fine. But imagine if Trump was black and Obama was white. How would you, how would you interpret those actions? One guy has got 15 boxes, an entire fucking FBI raid. Another guy has eight, eight years worth of 30 million boxes and he told us five years ago he's digitized these at 0% and nothing is happening to the guy. Switch it. Trump's black, Obama's white. What would we all be saying? This is a clear example of racial discrimination and we would be right. We'd be right. And I'm sorry, but this most recent raid with the information I have now about Mr. Hussein Obama, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't care. It's at the point now where it doesn't matter what the FBI quote unquote finds. Okay, if they find some beautiful, too good to be true smoking gun, um, I would, I would be, I wouldn't be surprised. But I don't believe that people are going to. It's going to change anything relative to uh, Trump's electorate. And you can go and mock Trump's people all you want and say it's because they're unthinking and all the rest of it. But that's because you haven't been paying attention, and uh, the the Republicans, the Democrats, were counting on you not remembering things. I don't care about Trump. I don't care about Pelosi. I don't care about me. I don't care about none of that. I care about you. I care about you. I care about my kids. I care about my trans friends. I care about you. I care about this country. I don't care about personalities. I have no vested interest in destroying Trump or exalting Trump or any of these political people. But the, the stunt that was pulled for the last four years about Trump was wrong. And that's why I spoke about it every single time that I had to. And a bunch of you guys are saying, you're black. How are you supporting Trump? You didn't realize it. I wasn't supporting Trump. I didn't want eventualities like this to happen. Because I am telling you, if they find something on this man, it is absolutely going to get bloody. If I was the head of the FBI, I, I mean, it would have to be it would have to be some irrefutable shit like he he stole he he was sharing nuclear codes with uh, China. I would look the other. I would say we got to let this go. Why? Because of the historical context. There's too much stuff coming out of your guys's mouth about this guy that is not going to destroy and ruin our country. So you should let it go if you're the FBI and you should uh, get out of this as soon as possible. Dear listener, Trump just shattered uh, fundraising records today. He just shattered them. That's money. The only thing that people will hold on to uh, more than a dollar is their own blood. But if they're willing to give that much money, as I showed you in the previous episode, there are still... American jihadists who are locked and loaded and itching to release all the rage that they felt in the last two years. They're itching to find a group of people to release all that energy on. And they're itching to find a situation that instigates and justifies that in their own mind to validate their hero fiction of themselves. This is a fucking disaster. 
And the next time you run into a Trump, we better make sure that our I's are dotted and our T's are crossed because these games that got that got played for the last four years have completely ruined this country. It's pitted us against each other. And now, no matter what the FBI finds, there will be blood if something happens to that man. So unless it's something really, really critical, the FBI needs to let that shit go. That's my uh, uh, diagnosis of the issue. Let it go and fucking move on as fast as possible. And inshallah, he beats DeSantis. Because like I said to you leftists, uh, you don't want DeSantis around. Because if Trump does some reckless shit, he's going to post it on Twitter. DeSantis will fucking dig into the law library and destroy your life. But that's a different story. I love you guys. I am late for my other uh, uh, appointment. Uh, shout out to all you beautiful people. Sketch Therapy, uh, uh, Steven Sinalas, uh, all you beautiful people. Thank you so much. Much love to you. I will be breaking up uh, the two episodes uh, later. Um, if you know the other thing, then you know. Much love to all you beautiful people. <sighs> love your neighbor. Right, 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 right. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I'll give you that, Tasco. Or they could go after HRC and Obama. Right. If you get me, get me, get me, get me HRC and Obama. Okay? Uh, put, put HRC in handcuffs. Put Obama. Make him really, really justify himself. Make him sweat a little bit. I don't think you can arrest Obama, but you could definitely arrest Hillary because it was her folks that started the whole fusion GPS thing with Apple research against Trump. Um, but that's outside of Mueller's purview. Yeah, uh, if you jam up Hillary and you jam up uh, Trump, fine. But you and I both know they're not going to do that shit. So what I am saying is they need to let that shit go and move on as soon as possible. Um, I love all you beautiful people. Much love to all you. Shout out to Jay Vell. Shout out to all the new folks. Uh, we're on the other channel. I am out of here. Uh, love your neighbor. Take care of each other and be good to each other. Huh? Be good to each other. Be responsible in the way that you post. If you're going to post something incendiary, please, for the love of God, fact check it. You know, triplicate uh, and verify. If you've got one source that only says one thing and no other source says that, then then you should drop it no matter how juicy it is. We've got to take accountability for the fact that we are now the media. Some of you, when you post, you carry more weight to me than the NBC Nightly News. Okay? Tasco says something, I stop. Maida says something, I stop. Franz says something, I stop. So, this is how we're relating to each other now, and it's a great responsibility. So, please, for the love of God, do your research before you post and you comment. You can comment, say whatever you feel, but if you're going to say this is a fact, please... Try to verify it so that you don't contribute to this ridiculous zeitgeist that we're in because these people are obsessed with this country getting bloody. And I know that you love this country just as much as I do. We've got to love the country more than we hate Trump. And we've got to love America more than we love Trump. That's my final thoughts. Love your neighbor. Take care of each other. Middle America. We are the media. Take that shit seriously, guys. Till next time.